This is the best car seat you can buy. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here with this Aduna car seat here. And as you can see, this car seat is special. It turns into a stroller. Why is that important? Because when you are going around to places, now you don't have to have your car seat and then pull the car seat out and then take the baby out of the car seat and then grab the stroller that's taking up all the space in your trunk and then put the baby in the stroller and then put the car seat back in the car. And then when you're done, Take the baby out of the stroller, put it back in the car seat, put the car seat back in the car, fold up the stroller, put it back in your trunk. It's just a big mess. And actually, my friend John was the one that told me, don't fuss with that. You don't know how bad it is to take a car seat and a stroller everywhere you go. Just get this. And as you can see, it's a car seat, yet a stroller. And you might be saying, well, then how is it a car seat when it has these legs? I'm going to show you that. These legs retract here. So what we have is kind of your standard car seat. Now, I will say everything about this is pretty nice. Now, Duna is kind of known to make high-end car seat slash strollers. So it's not a cheap item. In fact, can you buy a car seat with a base? and a separate stroller and be cheaper than this? Well, you probably can, but when you think about not having to buy that separate stroller for your quick trips to the grocery store or around town or whatever it might be, well, this is really useful. And I will tell you that when you pull the baby out, sometimes people will just carry the car seat because they're just making a quick trip into a building or into their family's house or whatever it might be. And something like this is great because you can just deploy those legs and just wheel this thing around almost like luggage, just like this, right? So you can see those back wheels pivot and move. The front wheels are always in line with the stroller. All right, so first of all, you're probably wondering what the operation is like with the stroller. Let me show you how this works. All right, so the beautiful thing about this stroller is obviously the wheels here. Now I want to rotate this around here because what we have here is this red button. This is the button that will release the wheels to fold up as well as release them to come back down. So what you have to do here, and my suggestion through using this is that when the wheels are up, you really have to lift this up. If you have a baby in there, remember you're carrying baby plus all this equipment. So you wanna get the wheels up off the ground, take the load off the wheels. Then you wanna press this button in all the way like this. And what I found is just to use my foot here and kind of put the wheel up against the foot and push them back and then slowly set this down and set it all the way on the ground. And then you can hear the wheels click in there. And now the wheels are folded up under the body of the car seat here and now this will go into the base which i will show you in a minute so the reason i do that and move the wheels slowly and put the car seat down slowly to click those wheels in is because especially if you have a baby in here you don't want to jar them have them feel all these clicks so that's a really nice way to do it without disturbing your baby now to deploy the wheels if i don't have a baby in here what i can do is hit this button and they will come down just like that. But that's going to jar the whole thing too. So what I would recommend is to put this pretty close to the ground. I don't think you can have it sitting on the ground. I just hover the, over the ground a few inches here and then hit this button. And what will happen here is the wheels will deploy, but then they will stop on the ground. And then I will slowly lift it up like this Till you hear it click in and now it's all clicked in and safe and ready to go and again that's going to be minimal disturbance to the baby itself now you can do this without the baby in there and that's going to be probably ideal but a lot of times especially if you're pulling this out of the car you want those wheels deployed so that's how i would do it now i also want to show you on the front here what we have is green for go and red means stop if i click that in there now we have the brakes on so you don't have to worry about this rolling way especially if you're sitting at a table or you're sitting at a park bench, something like that. And if you wanna go, click it right there, just kind of like a regular stroller. And now this will move around just like that. All right, this stroller is really meant for infants, but it will grow a little bit. I'll show you that. I wanna show you how this works. So what you will have here is this head pad. These are rather padded up here. These are probably an inch and a half thick, and that is to brace the head. So if you move from side to side, certainly if you take an impact on the side of your car, it's going to brace the head of the baby. Now, what you can see here is that there are some loops and the straps that hold the baby in, the shoulder straps go through that. So this is attached to it. Now, there are three levels of holes in the back. So you can adjust this depending on how big your baby is. Obviously, if it gets very big, then you're gonna have to graduate to another size. But you can see we have seatbelt straps here. We also have these little pads here, which is going to help prevent the straps from cutting into the head or the neck. So I usually try to move those up towards the head or the shoulders as much as possible. We have this chest strap right here. And then we also have these little buckles right here, which will go in here. So I just wanna show you 
on Teddy here, if I put Teddy in there, and what I usually do is I pull the straps around as I'm setting the baby in. The straps will go over the shoulders, and again, I try to get these up here so that doesn't bother baby, right? The arms will be underneath these straps now, right? These are like chest straps. And then this buckle will buckle just like that. And then you wanna make sure that this is kind of up on the chest as much as possible. And then you're going to bring these buckles over and these will go over the legs, right? So you're gonna bring both of these over the legs, just like this. You're gonna bring this pad right here that's gonna go between the legs. You have the buckle right there and these buckles go in just like that. And then to release it, you just hit that red button. Now, you might be saying this is pretty loose and a lot of people say a few fingers or two fingers under here is how loose you want it. So what you will do right down here is this little gray button will release this strap, which is attached to the back of these straps. So if I want to tighten this, I'm going to push down this button and then pull these straps. So you just want to be careful that it's not binding up or anything. And then you can pull this tight so that now you can get just two fingers in there. Also, if you want to loosen it, you just hit this button and then pull on the straps and that will loosen it as well. So you can get a perfect fit for your baby. And then to get the baby out, you just hit this red button pull out these two buckles, unhook the chest buckle here. I just drape them off to the side and then lift baby out just like that. Now, what I wanna show you here are some of the features of the stroller before I get into adjusting this for other babies. As you can see, this handle is vertical right now and there are white buttons on either side here. So I can move these down. And this is really nice because once you're in stroller mode, this is kind of the best way to do it. And I actually like the baby facing you as opposed to facing away. To extend to this bar, you just hit this and extend it like that, and it comes out here. And, and someone who's average height for a guy like me, this is great, but for someone like my wife, she actually likes it a little lower, but either way, this is kind of very comfortable. And like I said, you can monitor your baby just like that. The other thing that this has right here is the sunshade. And one of the things that I was always wondering about is it didn't seem to kind of want to move forward very easily. And once this is broken in a little bit, when you pull it like this, it'll kind of move into that position. But sometimes, especially at the beginning, you have to grab it down here because these plastic ribs kind of flex and don't allow it to click into place. So sometimes you have to pull them down here and now it's stretched into the full sunshade position. It does come in a couple different colors. I think a black and a green as well. I wanted the gray. I thought that might be a little lighter on bright days, maybe not be as hot, but it certainly is pretty opaque. And then you can adjust it, but then also push it all the way back if you like. Now, I also want to say that you can't extend this in any position other than angled back like this. If I put this in vertical position and try to extend it, it won't do that. But I can also push it all the way back. And this is nice for when you're putting this in the car and putting the baby in or trying to take the baby out when the car seat is on the base itself. All right, now as promised, I wanna show you some of the adjustments here because if I pull this away, you can see the straps go through the lowest openings here. And that's probably good for your newborn or infant, but we also have two holes here and two holes here. So as your baby gets older, it's gonna grow or maybe you have a big baby. If you have a six pound baby at birth, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to use these. But if you have a 10 pound baby at birth, you're probably gonna start going to these holes pretty quickly. Now, what I wanna show you here is on the back, this is where you can make these adjustments. So what we have here is this metal bracket that holds the strap that tightens it to the straps up here. So you kinda of have to snake them out, right? On either side here, just like that, and just like that. And now the straps are gonna retreat through there. And what you can do is pull them out and then feed them through the new holes that are appropriate for your baby, just like this. Again, I am not an attorney, I am not a doctor, so if this is not legal in your area or if this causes problems for your particular baby, I take no responsibility for that. But then, once you get these to the new position that you want, you're gonna feed these back underneath this bar here, that's what clips into the car seat base, and then you are going to put these back in here and just make sure that they are fully secured. You wanna make sure that the little hook there is holding in that strap. And again, feed the other one under there. And again, I'm gonna make sure that the belt is fully inside of the hook. I can see both of those hooks right there. Now, if I flip this around, you can see that these shoulder straps are much higher, right? And so the baby can fit in there much, much better. All right, now that you have the Duna Stroller set up for your baby, it's nice and secure, really comfortable in there, you're probably wondering, how do we get the stroller into the car, onto the base? So let me demo that. 
All right, so the Duna Stroller car seat comes with a base, which I really love because you can just put these in any car. It does come with one base included. If you have a second car, you can actually order a second base. And I don't know, it's about 150 bucks or something. So it's really nice to have a base in each car so that you don't have to move this around. Now, I do want to show you, obviously, the bottom here looks pretty standard, but you have this belt that goes across the top right here. It goes underneath this tab right there. And then the straps come down on each side and you have these locks here that will go into the child seat attachment. So if you have a car that's built in the recent years, you probably have these little attachments. You can either flip this up, take this out right there. And now what we have right in there, as you can see, is a little bar. And what that is going to do is that is going to go into the little slot right here. So if I go ahead and push that in there like this, you can hear it click. And to release it, you can just press this button and then just install the other side over there. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is cinched down nice and tight right there. You can press this button right here to release it and loosen it up. But you want to make sure that that is in there very nice and tight. All right. And then I put the strap across the top there. Now, the other thing you have up here is this little bubble level. So what you want is the little white arrow there to be in the green. And that means that the base here is flat as it should be. To adjust this, you can actually raise this up or down right here and make sure that you are in the green there. That's just going to keep baby nice and comfortable. Now, right here, you have this slot and this little plunger right there. And the metal bar on the bottom of the Duna is going to go in here and lock into place. All right, here is the bottom of the Duna, and there is that metal bar that will go into that little slot. So let me show you this. And you can see that this seat is not ready to go. You have a little red dot right there showing that it is not ready to go once you put the seat in there this is going to eject the switch and it's going to mean that it's locked in there and that little red dot will turn green showing that it's locked in there so let me show you that now as you're putting this in i will say it's easiest to have the handlebar in the middle position and i have found that generally you want to put it in either feet first or head first so that it goes in sideways kind of long way so that you can get it into your car and then turn it into position Depending on how big your car is and how big the opening is here, if you have a minivan or a big SUV, then it's probably not going to matter so much. But what we want to do now is get this into position so that that metal bar gets into that slot. And when it falls in, now it's in. Okay, so what we have, it's locked in there. Now you'll notice that once it's in position here, the seat is backwards facing. So one thing that you want to do here is hit this button on this side and the same button on the other side there and lower this handlebar down like this. And this handlebar is going to prevent this from flipping up if you get rear-ended. So it's going to act as another brace. So if this does get pushed up hard, it's going to hit this handlebar against the seat. So it's just another safety measure. But as I said, when you're putting this in or taking it out, it's going to be easiest to move this back up to the top position right there now let me show you how to get this out so what we have it's locked in there but what you can also see is that little red dot is a green dot now to get this out what you actually have to do is push down on this switch this is actually a lock to make sure that this switch does not go in so you have to push this down and then you push this in and that's going to release that bar from the bottom now you're going to need to use your other hand and lift the stroller out of the base right there and again because this is a fairly small opening i have found that twisting this all the way around twisting this sideways makes it easier to get in and out so this is the problem with most strollers i mean this is a fairly small car but i've already got stuff in the trunk and now i've got this separate stroller here which is pretty big but it's kind of your typical standard stroller and now i actually have to collapse all of this down and then I got to get this bad boy into the trunk and you're trying to get it in, collapse it down, bring it out, set it back up. What a pain. All right. So this is the Duna car seat and stroller. And I think that this thing is amazing. At $550, you get the car seat stroller and one of the bases that fits in your car. So I actually think it's a pretty good deal because you could definitely spend a couple hundred dollars on a car seat with a base. You could definitely spend a couple hundred dollars on another stroller. Again, this probably isn't the best stroller in the world, but it works actually quite well, even on less than ideal pavement. You know, some of the rockier sidewalks, 
This is probably not something that you would want to use if you are on cracked asphalt, if you are on dirt roads, things like that. You probably would want something like a jogging stroller for that. And so you probably will have another stroller in your arsenal. But for the reasons I explained, you are putting the baby in here, you're putting in the car, you're taking your baby out of the car, deploying these legs, doing your errands, walking around, going into a restaurant, and you never have to take the baby out. You never have to go to your trunk. You never have to pull something out that's taking up a lot of space. This thing is absolutely a lifesaver. And if you can afford it, I would absolutely recommend it because it's going to save you just a ton of time. You know, a lot of people think that transfer happens very quickly, but babies don't like to be taken out and then strapped up and then unstrapped and then put into something else and then strapped up again. So it just really aggravates them. And it's another step that you don't have to bother with. So if you want the best car seat stroller combo on the market, this is the one I chose and I think it is the best. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live better than.